So looking at light wattages and voltages is important. If you've ever been looking at lighting, uh, you might see things that are offered in, in different voltages, um, you know, and maybe you got the wrong one shipped to you. Also wattages, you might be wondering what that is. We're going to help explain that a little bit here. So we're talking about wattages in this case, and volts. We're talking These are the same volts, these are the same 120 volts. However, this one has a grounding plug, so it has nothing to do with the wattages or the volts but it is advised that you buy something that does have the grounding plug attached to it. So first off, watts, this might be what you're most familiar with if you're at to change light bulbs, because it's the amount of energy it takes to produce a certain amount of light. So these are, you know, 60 watt light bulbs indicated here. The higher the wattage, the more power the fixture uses, and ideally the brighter the light it will produce. This preferred wattage, so for full-size vegetative plants and flowering plants, focus on four, 600, or 1,000 watt lights. Most growers are focusing on the 600 or the 1,000 watts in particular. Anything smaller than this is not going to allow for maximum yields, and it's better used for clones or seedlings. 1,000 watt bulbs we see here. This could be the Pro 1000 double-ended uh, watt bulbs are considered to be the standard for North America by most growers. Other parts of the world or other growers will use 600 as kind of their standards. Uh, typically, we're seeing 1,000 watts being the general standard here. Now, the other terms you might be familiar with in the sense of electricity, this uh, diagram shows a perfect example. We have amps, which is the amount of charge or current flowing through the circuit over a period of time. We have the volts, which is like the pressure in line causing the current to flow through the wire, it's the push. And we have ohms, which is a unit of measurement indicating the amount of resistance applied to a current. So we want to keep the ohms as small as possible because we don't want to restrict this flow. This is kind of what could cause excessive heating and potentially lead to fire. Now we might hear 120 volt system versus a 240 volt system. While the plugs do look uh, vastly different, it's more than that, um, than just what the outer plug is. 120 volts is what most appliances run on, though if you have something that requires a high amount of energy, such as a dryer, it will typically run on 220 or 240 volts. Watts is equal to volt times amps, so let's use an example here. We're looking at changing the volts and how it relates to amps. Well, we have in this case a 1,200 watt um, appliance or um, required motor or a light or something to that nature. So we're keeping that the same. However, in one case we're going to buy 120 volt um, supporting light. In another case we're going to buy a 240 volt light. Well, the 120 volt is going to draw 10 amps, while the 240 is only going to draw 5 amps. So what does this mean, other than the outlets look differently? So the 240 volt requires less current or amps, and a smaller conductor can be used, smaller wire can be used, which can be advantageous. The 240 is the world standards, while the United States still uses the 120 volt is its standard. So again, keep in mind different parts of the world where they're not be located, and you could see why in some cases the 240 volt is advantageous, simply because of the less amps requiring a smaller conductor that can be used to transfer that energy.